Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is question number four from the June 2013. Um, this is like the R paper. It's two papers that year. It's a couple of years like that. Replacement paper. I'm not sure exactly what it means, to be honest. Um, this is from the uh, M1 old specification, but it's relevant to NXL questions now, relevant to Cambridge questions now as well, um, except for the value of G in Cambridge will be 10 in Excel will be 9.8, but the concepts are very much within both of the specifications. Nice question here, which I've used as one of my examples in my notes. And um, so I've, I'm going to make a video here because I've seen some people asking about it. So at time t equals 4, sorry, t equals 0, it's question number 4. At time t equals 0, two balls A and B are projected vertically upwards. The ball A is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 2 meters per second from a point 50 meters above the horizontal ground. The ball B is projected vertically upwards from the ground with a speed of 20 meters per second. At time T equals capital T seconds. The two balls are at the same vertical height, H meters above the ground. The balls are moving or modeled as particles moving freely under gravity. Find the value of T and the value of H. Okay, so now let's just make a little diagram to kind of picture the situation. All right, it's always important to do that. So let's say this is the ground level. And let's say, straighten up a bit, horizontal ground. So th this is the level of the ground. And let's say that this is um, the level, say, 50 meters above the ground. Okay, so basically you've got, let's call this point, let's call this level P and this level Q, right? So you've got the ball A, which is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 2 meters per second from 50 meters above the ground. So that, that distance is 50 meters. Let's put that distance in. I'm not putting display. I'm just putting the actual the distance. Okay, so this distance here, this distance here is 50 meters. Okay, that's 50 meters. Okay, the distance between how, how high Q is above P. P I've called the ground level and Q I've called 50 meters above the ground. All right, now, um, ball A is projected from um, P, from Q up here, okay, which is 50 meters above the ground. This is ball A, and it's projected with a speed upwards of two meters per second, two meters per second. And Ball B is projected vertically upwards from the ground with a speed of 20 meters per second. So ball B is projected from this level uh, upwards again with a speed of 20 meters per second. Okay, they meet at a point, it says at time t equals t seconds, the two bits are the same vertical height. So they don't meet, but they're in the same vertical height, eight meters above the ground. Okay, so at a certain time, somewhere, I don't know where exactly, it could be above P and Q. It could be below P and Q. We don't know until we calculated it. Right? But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really, uh, our calculations will tell us exactly where when we finished. So it could be anywhere above P, of course. There's going to be a time where they're at the same level. It could be that uh, A went up and it fell, you know, went up and came down, you know, back, back uh, past A on the way down. And this went up as this was going up and it came down again. They were at the same level. Or as this was going up, that was coming down. We don't know. We don't know the situation. But we know that at t equals t seconds, they're at the same level. So I'm just going to just randomly put it over here. We don't know. Our calculations will tell us in the end exactly where it is. And I'm going to call that point x. Okay. And x is when this is when time equals capital T seconds. They're going to be at that level. And that level is above the ground, a distance of h meters. So above the ground, that level is h meters. So I'll just put it over here. That level is h meters. Okay, that's h meters above the ground. We don't know what it is. And as I said, it could be down here, it could be up there, right? And it really doesn't matter uh, in terms of our calculations will tell us exactly where we are um, at the end. All right, so now, we have to try to find the value of t, the time at which they're at the same level, and the value of h, the height at which they're at the same, of course, the, the, you know, what, what that height is at when they're at the same level. 
Okay, so now let's see what we can do. We're going to, of course, use SUVAT because we have constant acceleration due to gravity. And of course, the gravitational force acts downwards, G. All right, so let's consider the particle A um, and the particle B. Let's consider what we know about them. Okay, I have S, U, V, A, T, S, U, V, A, T. Now, A, I'm considering from where it's starting, which is at Q, to where it ends at X. But B, I'm considering where it's starting from P to where it's ending at also X. I know both of them have traveled 40 seconds. Okay, I know that the initial velocity of, of A is 2 meters per second, and the initial velocity of B is 20 meters per second. The, fire, the, fire, the velocity of A and B at the points where they are at the same level, we don't know. So I'll just call them V A and V B. The acceleration, well, I'm going to take up as positive because they were projected upwards. At the start of the journey here, it's going up. At the start of the journey here, it's going up. At this, at this point, it's going that way. At that point, it's going that way. So I'm, for both of them, I'm going to call up positive. Okay, so the acceleration is going to be negative G for both of them, negative G. Okay, and what I've got to now think about is how, what do I write for the displacement? Remember, this is the displacement. So if I think about the displacement for B, it's pretty simple. It's going to be H because it's going to be H one meters above the ground. B starts above the ground. But for A, the displacement is going to be the di difference between where it is and where it ends up at that time. So it's going to be this. This is going to be the displacement for A. This is S A, which is going to be, according to our diagram, H minus 50. H minus 50. Okay, now, depending on, depending on the value of H, okay, um, we'll be able to find out whether it's above or below at the end. Right now, we'll just write H minus 50 because that is that distance. That's H minus 50. Okay, if it was down here, we might have to write 50 minus H, but the value of H will give us the right answer no matter what we do, as we will see. Okay, it will give us the correct answer no matter what we do, because if, um, if the, the H ends up as being something which is, um, um, you know, a displacement, which is positive, it will come out as a positive answer, negative, negative answer. And we will see exactly what happens in the end uh, when we finish. So right now, we can just write H minus 50 here. And we can write here as, um, you know, H. Okay, so the displacement of, of A above the, its starting point is H minus 50. And the displacement of B above its starting point is H at the time T equals seconds when they're at the same level. So now with these values here, I can now use the formula S equals, I have S, what did I not write? this is H minus 50, H. Minus 50. S equals ut plus a half at squared, I think. H minus 50. I have S, U, A, and T. S, U, A, and T. So S equals ut plus a half at squared is the formula I'm going to use. So for A, okay, I'm going to use S as H minus 50. Equals U, which is 2. T, which is capital T, plus a half times g times capital t squared okay and it's going to be minus g that's going to be minus g so you have to have a half times minus g times t squared okay and for b i'm going to start off with h equals u times t which is 20 times t uh, ut plus a half times minus g times t squared Okay, so I'll have two equations here. I have one equation, h minus 50 equals 2t minus a half g capital T squared. That's one equation. And the other equation from here will be um, h equals 20t minus a half g t squared. Okay, now, if I take these two equations and solve them simultaneously, I can eliminate um, this this whole thing here, all right? If I subtract those equations, if I do, for example, equation two minus equation one, I'll have h minus h minus 50. The h's will cancel out there. And I'll have equals 20t minus 2t, which is 18t. And minus a half gt squared minus minus a half gt squared, they'll be added and they'll cancel out. So this gives me h minus h, which is zero. 
Okay, I'll have H minus H plus 50 equals 18T. So I'm going to end up with 50 equals 18T. So therefore, T is going to be 50 divided by 18. Now, 50 divided by 18 will give us 25 over 9. So I'll write it as that first. 25 over 9 seconds, which we should really round to 3SF. Better, that gives us 2.777. So we got 2.777, so 2.78 seconds. We can write it as 2.8 seconds as well if you want to. Because we use G in our calculations, we can use 1SF or 2SF. That's for an Excel. For Cambridge, we would have had used, uh, well, in fact, G would have got cancelled out here. All right, so we would have got the same answer, basically. But we normally use 3SF for Cambridge. All right, now that's part A we found. Okay, so the diagram is for both of them. Part A is we find finding the value of T. Now, the value of H is pretty simple. Once we found T, we can use any one of these two equations. Like I can use this equation and just put T as 25 over 9. It's better to use it in its more exact form. So H equals 20 times 25 over 9 minus a half times, and this is where I'm going to use 9.8 uh, times um, 25 over 9 squared. If it was Cambridge, I would use 10 instead of the 9.8. That's all the difference there. So now I'm going to use 20 times... 25 over 9 minus half times 9.8 is 4.9 times 25 over 9 squared. Square that. And that gives us an answer for H, which is 17.7469. 17.7469. So we say H is equal to 17.7 meters. So that's the value of H. Okay, and that's 2.78 seconds is the time capital T. So we've got the answers for part A and part B of this question, 17.7. Okay, so now let's just analyze now. I mean, that's fine. We've got the answer. We finished. We've we've we we've, we've done this question. That's you know. No need to do anything else. However, I just want to analyze what we just found here. Basically, we found that H is 17.7. So basically, this height that we've got is actually going to be down here. Okay, so in our diagram, our H is actually down here. This is the level at which they, they actually meet, 17.7 meters above the ground. Okay, so this is actually where our X is. But our calculation found that anyway. We don't have to worry about um, you know, this H is actually 17.7 meters above the ground. 17.7 meters. Okay. So, you know, the displacement of, of A when it reaches this point from where it started would be basically, you know, it will be, 50, it will be basically 50 minus 17.7. It will be this value here, but negative because it's below its starting point. So this would be a negative value. Okay, as you can see, it's going to be 17.7 minus 50. And this would be um, a positive value, which is 17.7 meters above the ground. So it, it works out fine. For this, for B, H would be 17.7. For A, H, uh, the, the displacement would be 17.7 minus 50. So it would be this answer minus 50, which is negative 32.2. So this distance from, from here to here is... 32.2. So the value of S for this would be negative 32.2. Why? Because we're taking up as positive and it would be down. So you see the numbers work out to be just perfectly fine. Even though we, we kind of draw it on top, it doesn't matter. In the end, our values will give us the correct amount. So don't have to worry too much about that. Okay. In the end, as long as you do everything correctly and you think about things in terms of displacements and, um, you know, like we're starting from here, we're ending here for A. B starts from here, ends there, and do everything according to that in terms of the speeds, the displacements, the times, and, you know, the directions. Then everything will work out in the end. So this is, a you know, a nice question to, to show, to illustrate that. So that completes this question number four from the June 2013 R paper from M1 at Excel. 
Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from the topic of um, constant acceleration um, from M1 can be found over here. This is from edXL. I'll also put this in my playlist for my Cambridge um, M1 constant acceleration uh, topic as well. So students there can also uh, view it. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.